Hello everyone. Welcome back to our Alif Tech Talk series. Today in our house, we have a very different person here. His name is Andrew Taylor, and he is an MVP for Intune. Please stay put with us for we are about to take you on a roller coaster ride and an, a very, very interesting session. So Andrew, hi, how are you doing? I'm OK, thank you. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you so much. Can we get started? We can, yes. Um, so Perfect. hi everyone, I'm Andrew, I'm an Intune MVP um, and I've been working in Intune for many years now um, and EUC for years before that. Uh, so today we'll run through um, Intune, do you want to introduce the, the topic? Thank you, thank you so much Andrew, yes. So uh, we would like to um, talk solely around, you know, know your views on uh, empowering remote work with Microsoft Intune, uh, especially secure management uh, and how can it be happening anywhere or at any time? All yours. Absolutely, thank you. Uh, so um, Microsoft Intune is uh, a mobile device management platform. Um, most people shorten that to MDM and it is fully cloud-based. So there is no on-prem infrastructure required. It supports all of your main platforms. Uh, so you've got Windows, Android, iOS, macOS, and there's a bit of Linux support in there as well, although that's still quite young. Um, as it's cloud cloud managed, you've got full access to, to everything anywhere. That's the, the, the beauty behind it. So your, your devices can be anywhere in the world and you can access them and manage them remotely. Um, when uh, the COVID pandemic hit, that was a big problem for most organizations where they had on-prem infrastructure and deploying applications or settings to your devices was tricky because you needed line of sight to your office and obviously you've got a load of users now working from home and that's where Intune stepped up um, because you can you can push out policies applications security settings anything you like pretty much from the Intune portal and your machines check in about roughly every 20 minutes um, pick up any new settings and apply them to the devices. It, the reporting is also much better than your traditional on-prem group policy, um, certainly on the Windows side. And then, of course, on top of that, you've also got your mobile devices. So rather than having to purchase a, an extra third party, Intune can also manage your corporate and bring your own um, Android iOS devices. So if you're handing your users corporate devices, you can fully manage them, you can spit, you can lock them down, you can uh, encrypt them, force apps onto them, stop them installing their own apps, that kind of thing. But if they are using their own devices, um, you can restrict the data so you can protect your corporate data on their device without managing the device itself. So if there are any issues, you won't wipe the user's device, you'll wipe the user's corporate data. So it's it's kind of differentiating the the device from the data. So you don't own you don't manage the device, which is which was often a concern for end users. And that functionality has recently been added to Windows as well. So you can now manage Edge on a user's home device, which means that you can give them a, a semi bring your own device experience. They have to use web apps, but you can ensure your data is protected within that. Which, which is a big selling point, um, especially with lots of people wanting to use their own their own devices at home. In terms of building a Windows machine that uses a functionality called Autopilot. Uh, traditionally, when you built a machine with uh, SECM or MDT, it put an image on the machine. So you build a created image and you would then push that to the machine um, via the yeah, on-prem network. That it worked really well, but you've got to spend the time building your image. You've got to keep your image updated. There's a lot of a lot of effort in creating that. And of course, it doesn't work very well remotely. What Autopilot does is it takes the Windows image on the machine. So it takes your, you know, your shop off the shelf Windows build and it installs applications and, and amends policies on top of that. So there's no building as such. It's more provisioning of a machine. Um, and that again is fully cloud managed. So anywhere in the world, as long as the user has a, a reasonable internet connection, they can build their device. There's no admin steps involved. You don't need an IT person to log in and set anything up. You can send them the, use, the laptop. They will log in with their account and the laptop will set itself up. If you've got some, some heavy applications, there is uh, pre-provisioning that you can do 
where you can set it to install your key applications before you send it to the user. But again, there's no login needed. So the effort from the IT side is, is again, really low. Um, when looking at joining your Windows devices, um, you need to look at moving away from your domain join. The hybrid join is a, a stepping stone for your current devices, so you can take your on-prem managed devices, hybrid join them to Intune and manage them that way. But when looking at autopilot, you want to be looking at Enter joined or Enter ID joined, which is um, the more modern approach. And it's a lot more secure because you, you've removed the, the lateral movement between devices because the devices can't talk to each other. So if you've got an account on one device, it can't then access another device. So you've got that extra layer of protection in there. Uh, Intune follows a full uh, zero trust model. Um, so it is it is a lot more secure than any of your tr traditional management tools. Um, and I can share, I will load up. I'll share my window. So this page here goes through all of the uh, zero trust parts available with Microsoft Intune. Uh, so you've got least privilege access. So if we look at that one, um, when you build a device with autopilot, the users don't have administrative rights. And generally the, the devices, um, the admins, you have to set a group. So you can say, right, these uh, service test staff, for example, have admin rights over the devices. But because that's an Azure AD role, you can further lock that down with um, PIM, Privilege Identity Management, so you can give them just-in-time access. Hi, uh, I'm just so sorry to interrupt. Could you please uh, zoom the screen just a little bit? Mm -hmm. yep. yep. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Yeah, is that better? Thank you. Yep. 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 Uh, so yeah, you can use you can use Privilege Identity Management um, to provide just-in-time access to your administrative rights. So your service desk don't have permissions over the entire estate the whole time. It's only when they need it. Uh, on top of that, you've got endpoint privilege management. Um, if you have some applications which need administrative rights, you can configure that within Intune and say, right, these particular applications can elevate, but they can't do anything else. So that application will run as an admin on its own. It won't let anything else elevate within it. And as your absolute backup, you've also got laps. Um, so say your device has lost network connectivity um, and you need to log in and fix something, you can use that and it'll provide you a temporary admin password, which you then re reset when you go back on again. I will stop sharing that. Um, as mentioned, it's multi-platform. Uh, it ties into um, Apple Business Manager and the managed Google Play Store. So you can do um, zero touch enrollment for both Apple and Android devices, and you can push out applications centrally. Um, both of those tools are free. Um, you've got to sign up to both, but they are both free tools and link in nicely to, to Intune. Um, application deployment for Windows, you've got a few options there. You've got the new, new store applications where you can push those out and they're curated from the store by Microsoft or you can wrap your own applications either as an MSIX package or a Win32, and you can push those out silently uh, in the same way that you would with, with SCCM or group policy. So you'd, you'd package applications, add them, and deploy them. Uh, one big advantage of Intune is it has a really powerful API underneath called Microsoft Graph. Um, and this means that anything that you are doing in the, um, in the UI can be done at the command line level. So you can run in uh, PowerShell or in any other tool. You can do the same operations. So you can interact with your devices. You can push out policies, applications, which means that you can do things uh, automated on a bigger scale. There's less risk of making mistakes. And certainly if you're an MSP or you've got multiple customers, it's going to be easier if you can do the same setting across, across multiple devices. And the Graph API also links through to Entra underneath, SharePoint, um, Exchange, everything uses Graph. So once you're in there, you've got you've got ability to manipulate everything. So you can look at users, groups, everything can be done at the command line 
and automated to make life so much easier. On top of Intune, you've also got the new Intune suite, which is a paid add-on. Um, and that gives you some, some extra abilities that you don't have out of the box. So uh, endpoint privilege management, as we mentioned, that's part of Intune suite. You've got remote help, so you can remotely access and manage your um, and help your users. So that's available for, I believe at the moment, Windows and Android. Um, and that means that you can access their device remotely and help them out with it without needing a third party tool um, such as TeamViewer. There's um, endpoint analytics and it's got an advanced anomaly detection, which is a powerful um, AI driven tool which looks at your estate and will proactively alert you if you've got, say, uh, a selection of applications which are causing uh, a slowdown on the machine or um, a particular Windows update has gone out which is causing problems. It will alert you of that so you can deal with it before it becomes a bigger issue across the estate. Uh, when it comes to Windows updates, that's all handled nicely because obviously it's, it's Microsoft underneath. Um, but if you're licensed for it, auto patch takes the effort away and lets Microsoft deal with the automation of updates as well. So they will, it assigns your machines into different deployment rings. They then push out the updates for you and they will also monitor if there's any problems with updates, they can pause them on your behalf. So again, it's it's taking that level of effort out of the IT person's day-to-day -day work so they can concentrate on being more proactive and looking at, at how they can push things forward rather than just always being on the, the reactive side um, and, and fighting with issue after issue. Um, and of course, with uh, the, the move to Windows 11 now and its, its biannual updates and also any future OSs that might come that way, they are pushed out as um, as packs through Intune. So again, you can you can manage your rollout of new OSs rather than the days of you know XP to Windows 7, where it was a, a massive job to go and rebuild all your devices. In this way, you literally flick a switch in Intune, and it will start deploying out to your to your update rings. So it's it's a lot more powerful. It's all cloud driven. So users at home, you don't have to bring them in. To, to update their devices. They can do it at home. It grabs it over their internet. If they're in the office, you can set it up to share the network so it won't hammer your, your internet traffic as well. Um, one of my favorite parts of Intune personally is the scripting. Um, you can run remediations, which are, it's like a scheduled task, but it's a scheduled task with logic. So you can say, I want to check if you know, users have installed Google Chrome because that installs in user context and you can you can run it and say every hour look for Google Chrome if you find it remove it and that level of of control over the devices you never really had with the previous management tools um, and a new thing coming soon um, Intune can also it will check in on the policies even if the device is offline so it will check against the, the last set policy. And if someone's changed something, it will revert it back. So these are just, just adding to the security. You can set up your environment and you can be sure that no matter what the user does, it will always have the settings you need. So encryption, for example, you don't want a user to unencrypt their laptop because if that goes missing, you're, you're in for massive fines. Once you've got it set, you're, you're comfortable that your devices are all fully encrypted that safety is there um, and you can run reports or provide your security team with reports just to put their minds at ease. But from, from an Intune admin side, it's again, it, it's less it's less effort. It's a, it's a set and forget setting rather than previous days of you know having to run through machines and, and run reports for admins and all the rest. And that's, I mean, that's that's the basis of Intune. It's it's about security. It's about accessing your devices anywhere in the world on any device. Um, if you add Windows 365 into the mix, you've got a secured cloud machine. So that's effectively taking your laptop and putting it in a data center. And then you can access that from absolutely anything, Android, iOS, you name it, and you will get the fixed Windows experience. If you throw OneDrive, 
into the mix, you've then got all of your your data following you around for SharePoint as well. So your device is it's literally just a box to access your data. Once you've got Intune there, once you've got OneDrive there, there's no troubleshooting anymore with devices. You just hit rebuild. You know, 40 minutes later, user logs back in, their device is up and running again. Um, and for that, I mean, I've I've been working in IT for over 20 years, and Intune is is a massive game changer. Um, I spend a lot less time troubleshooting issues now, and more time looking at the future. I can I can look at new new technologies because Intune is always expanding. They're putting a lot of work, especially in Intune Suite. There's a lot of work going into this, and every month there's a, a, a what's coming and what's new and it, it runs into pages and I can now look at that and say right we need to be looking at this we need to consider this you know there's a new version of Windows 11 out we need to make sure everything works for that but you can concentrate on that rather than dealing with the 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 day-to-day -day admin tasks which you would previously have had with with on-prem devices and to me that's 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 the big selling point of Intune Well, uh, that's that was quite informative, Andrew. I I personally uh, found myself, you know, just intrigued with the session, and there were quite a lot of things uh, I learned, and I'm sure our partners and our audience uh, would also be getting insights from this very session. Um, anything you would like to sum up, or uh, perhaps you know, give an advice or a couple of tips to our partners, just um, to make a nutshell view of your entire topic. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, when getting started with with Intune, if you're migrating from uh, on-prem to cloud, right. the first things to look at are printing, file shares, and wireless. Get those three issues sorted, and you can ditch the domain sharing quickly. As an Intune administrator, I would say absolutely learn Graph and PowerShell because once you've mastered those skills underneath, you can take Intune a level above what you can do in the UI and you can you can work quicker and you can work more effectively. I think I couldn't agree more. Thank you so much, Andrew. Thanks a lot. This was really, really interesting and we would love to have you for uh, other topics or on Intune and you know, we would really, really like to host you again. So thank you so much for coming and being a part of our Tech Talk series. We would surely be seeing you again. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. This is your host signing off. See you until the next video. Bye bye.